to sit at a dinner table with me to eat. The custom, the old custom, was for the man to eat alone and for the wife to sit on the kitchen floor and eat her meal after the man had eaten. And he was so influential that I had to submit to his rules. And when we'd go to guests, I would sit at the table and my wife would sit on the kitchen floor. We went into the north of Thailand. She flew up later on an old DC-3 with canvas seats and landed in a buffalo field 200 miles from Hanoi. Frightened within an inch of her life. She was only 23 years old and had a little girl, five years old, blonde headed and blue eyed. And we picked her up. We were at a Presbyterian conference and people were responding to our ministry, wanting to be baptized, wanting us to go to other Presbyterian churches. And so we went in my car. But guess what? Boone Mark would not allow my wife to sit in my car. And he made her stay in that city alone in a house with no furniture across the street from a crematory, from a Buddhist crematory where they cremated the dead and the house was available because the Buddhist people were terrified of that house. They were afraid because spirits were supposed to live in that house. And he gathered up everything and put it in the car. And we went on our way to baptize these people. And my wife was forced to stay alone in that place with no money, no food. She went to a neighbor who lived in a grass hut and begged for food. She could not speak the language yet and she pointed to her mouth and her stomach that she was hungry. Someone recoils and says, I would never go to such a place as that. That's the reason God sent me instead of sending you. God wanted a church in that nation. And if I had not been willing to tolerate that kind of stuff for four years, there would have never been a church in Thailand. He tormented my wife and finally we went to a conference. It was a conference where 63 preachers were baptized in Jesus name and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We didn't know that was going to happen but it did happen in that conference and the enemy, the devil, tried to use Brother Boone Mark to keep it from happening. And my wife received a letter through the mail that said you must get out of the nation within 48 hours or you shall be arrested and imprisoned concerning her visa. And he held that letter in his own hands for seven days. She was sure to go to prison before he ever gave her that letter. And he came to that conference and he, ha, 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 ma'am, go, here's a letter for you, threatening that she would be imprisoned. And my wife, the Spirit of the Lord, moved upon her and said, Billy, he's wanting to do something very sinister in this conference. You must not leave. I will go by myself. You must not go. And it was indeed the will of God to me to re remain there. And God did help my beautiful wife, who was so gentle, so kind, and so gracious to everyone. God helped her. But when she got home, do you remember what happened, Billy? And I said, yes, I remember what happened. She said, tell me what happened. I said, you wailed and you cried. And I remember what you said. He said, Billy, I am trying, I am trying, but I hate that man. I hate him. He torments me till there is no life in me. 
I said, yes, I remember. She said, do you know how I got victory over that? You know I have victory. I said, yes. She said, the way I got victory, I told the Lord of my despair, and he commanded me to pray for Boone Mark Gittison every single day for one hour. And every day for a year, I prayed for Boone Mark Gittison one hour. Not that God would kill him, but I prayed for him. And God give me glorious victory. She said, you remember the recent visit we had in Thailand? Poon Mark later fell into immorality and lost his credentials. And you remember him coming to that meeting and what he said, yes. I said, I remember him coming and asking if, I, if he could speak just a word to the conference. And I said, yes. And he got up and said, I am a very old man. I am 88 years old. I am dying and I want to die. But there is something that I have to do before I die. And that is to ask this wonderful woman, this beautiful woman, Ma'am Cole, to forgive me. I tormented her. And I don't know why I done it, but I tormented her and I want her to forgive me. And here is my Bible. He could quote the New Testament from the first verse of Matthew to the last verse of Revelation. He could quote the entire New Testament. He was brilliant. And he says, I want her to forgive me. And my wife leaped to her feet and it was not the custom of Thai people to touch each other, especially for men or women, to touch each other. But Sister Cole embraced that old man and said, It's all right, Ajahn. You see, I forgave you many years ago. It's all right. Save yourself from this untoward generation. And if you have been wounded and hurt, pray, pray. God has healed my heart. God gave me victory. It was not the next day. It was not the next week or the next year. I wrestled with that a long time. But God gave me so much victory and if that man, did that man ever ask you to forgive him? No. He has never asked me to forgive him. And he never will. But if he would walk into this studio right now, I would be glad to see him. And I would put my arms around him. And I would not be a hypocrite. Because God has given me victory. God has given me victory.